Hello, everyone. My name is Marcus Burke, and I'm with the Equity Action Team at the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And in this module on business impact on society and the environment, today I'll give you an overview of our work on tackling inequality, where I'll discuss how the structural nature of inequality in our world today represents a systemic risk that poses a threat to our society and economy, as well as a framework for companies to use to tackle inequality. To start off, we can break down the sustainable development agenda into three key systemic challenges that urgently need addressing in the form of the climate emergency, nature loss, and mounting inequality. With climate and nature, we're at a point where the conversations on the why and the what are becoming less frequent and are more around the how. But when it comes to inequality, although the social sustainability movement has been in operation for a long time, the challenge and the opportunity is building the case that it's a systemic risk to businesses. So business efforts on the social side of sustainability as of now have largely been reactive, addressing issues in isolation as they emerge, trying to mitigate negative impacts. So think companies managing human rights violations like child labor and forced labor in their supply chains, or businesses trying to suppress unions and worker representation. So all that to say, WBCSD saw a need to align the global business community around a more strategic, holistic, and impactful action agenda to show that mounting inequality is an increasingly urgent systemic risk. Our world today is characterized by mounting inequality in terms of income, wealth, well-being, and opportunity. Although income inequality between countries has generally declined over the past 40 years, during the same period, inequality within countries has risen significantly. The disparity in terms of wealth is even greater, and it is growing. Since 1995, the richest 10% has accumulated more than 20 times more wealth than the poorest 50% combined. This distribution of income and wealth is translating directly into inequalities of well-being, leaving hundreds of millions of people still struggling to meet their basic needs. A recent Oxfam analysis suggests that inequality-related issues are killing one person every four seconds. And finally, these inequalities of income, wealth, and well-being are underpinned by inequalities of opportunity, deep structural differences in people's chances or prospects based on their personal characteristics and backgrounds. There are a number of trends that are exacerbating the inequality that has taken hold in many societies across the world. COVID-19 is one of them. We saw that income level has been a stronger predictor of death due to COVID-19 than age. We're seeing that the impacts of climate change are falling disproportionately on the most vulnerable members of society. And new research suggests climate change could push up to 132 million people into extreme poverty by 2030. We're seeing that new technologies are boosting demand and wages for workers with the skills to use them while threatening the livelihoods of those without. And then we know that armed conflict hits the most vulnerable the hardest, fueling major increases in inequality. So I keep saying that inequality is a systemic risk, but what does this actually mean and why is it a threat to our economy and society? Inequality erodes trust in our political and economic systems. It unravels the social fabric. Studies have shown that where inequality is higher, people are less trusting of each other, less willing to take action to improve the living conditions of others, and more likely to commit crimes. Inequality fuels civil and political unrest. It is a threat multiplier and increases the damage that crises cause, like pandemics and climate change. It constrains economic growth and it undermines our capacity to tackle complex challenges like building a more sustainable world. Because of all of this, the risk for business means a volatile operating environment, supply chain insecurity, the erosion of productivity, regulatory and compliance risks, reputational risk, and lack of access to capital. And on this point, we're seeing that corporate performance on inequality-related matters is set to become a factor for investor decision-making. So while the rationale for business action to tackle inequality is about mitigating risk, it is also about building a world of opportunity in which business can thrive in the long term. What does this mean? It means tackling inequality can strengthen the operating environment by building trust, 
enhancing social and political stability, containing crises, and boosting economic growth. So in order to face these challenges, we set up the Business Commission to Tackle Inequality, or BCTI, to drive awareness, investment, and action to work on the S and ESG, and to solve the challenges posed by increasing levels of inequality globally, where we focus on changing mindsets, creating a shared vision and direction, and catalyzing and coordinating action so companies have easy access to tools, networks, and guidelines to support their efforts. We recently launched our flagship report, which is called Tackling Inequality, an Agenda for Business Action. We see this as a call to action for business leaders as it builds the business case and a comprehensive action agenda that they can leverage to help build a better society. We break down the report into three parts. Part one covers the need for business action, which defines inequality as a systemic risk and presents a compelling case for business action. Part two covers the 10 catalytic actions explaining why they're needed detailing the business case for them and highlighting case studies and resources that can support business action. And then part three goes over what's needed by the broader ecosystem to drive action, be it governance, stakeholder engagement, or measurement and disclosure. And there are 10 catalytic actions that individual companies can take and that stakeholders increasingly expect them to take to start to tackle inequality. These actions cover a range of different scopes including a company's own operations, its supply chain, the marketplace, and its interactions with society at large. And so under those buckets, we have action one, implementing the UN guiding principles on business and human rights, which focuses on embedding human rights due diligence into business decision-making. Action two, making essential products and services more accessible and affordable, which covers making access to energy, food, housing, financial services, and others more affordable. Action three, creating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive workplace, which looks at embedding DEI throughout the workplace and embedding DEI in the supply chain. Action four, preparing people for the future of work, which covers building the skills that workers need to be and remain competitive in the job market. Action five, providing safe, secure, and sufficient work, which looks at making sure organizations promote the highest standards of physical and mental health and well-being in the workplace. Action six, paying and promoting living wages and incomes, which covers not just paying workers a living wage, but also promoting living wages and incomes in your supply chain. Action seven, supporting and respecting worker representation. This looks at the relationship between reduced inequalities and promoting a culture of worker representation within an organization. Action eight, supporting effective public policy. This covers the need for companies to support policies at the federal, regional, or local levels that reduce inequalities. Action nine, adopting responsible tax practices, which looks at reporting regularly and transparently about a company's approach and taxes paid. And finally, action 10, realizing the just transition to a net zero nature positive economy. This covers committing to reaching net zero greenhouse gas emissions no later than 2050, while also investing in adaptation. Much more detail is available in our full report, which you can access via this QR code. But to conclude, companies should care about inequality because they have a social and ethical responsibility to contribute to society. So let's go back to respecting human rights, paying workers a living wage, and investing in the communities in which they operate. Companies that work on reducing inequalities are more likely to earn the trust and loyalty of socially conscious consumers. And finally, companies that invest in reducing inequalities contribute to the creation of more stable and resilient markets, which ultimately benefits their own sustainability and growth. And with that, I thank you for your time and encourage you to reach out should you have any questions.